Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about BigQuery architecture. So I have already made a video for BigQuery introduction. So it is there in my playlist. So the playlist link is in the description box of this video. So today we are going to discuss about BigQuery architecture. Okay, so before getting into BigQuery architecture, so I just wanted to discuss few things before we start the actual architecture. So if you take any query engines like BigQuery, right? So generally we have two things. So we need two things. One is storage to store all the data and then we need compute. So compute means processing. So if you run some queries, then that is called compute. So when you when any query engine, if you go, you need to have this both. You need to have storage and then compute. Storage is to store your data. Compute is to process your data. Right. So this too. So BigQuery also has this too. But when you take few other query engines or like query engines like BigQuery, in some query engines, they used to have both in the coupled manner. Coupled manner means you cannot split storage and compute, which is not possible. So in that case, like it is more expensive for the infrastructure. Right. So if you take BigQuery here, the storage and compute are separated so that means it is inexpensive. So you don't want to pay for both. So only when you do a compute, you pay for compute. Only when you do storage, you pay for storage. So it is inexpensive and that is the greatest advantage. So BigQuery has been decoupled. So storage and compute has been splitted. So this is a starting point for the architecture, right? So, so now what is the next point I'm going to tell you? You will you will get it very easily because now we understood what is storage and compute and why it has been decoupled in BigQuery because of cost management, right? So fine. So now we can get into the actual architecture. So if you see BigQuery has different layers. So one by one, I'll tell you. So the very first layer is CO. L O S S U S Colossus. So this Colossus is a layer where we store the data. So that means for BigQuery, Colossus is a storage. So what exactly the Colossus? It's actually a file system similar to Google file system. It's a successor of Google file system. So Colossus is, is, a, is a cluster level file system and distributed, and it also maintains the replication for you for the data that you have been get stored. So now I'm going to compare this with a component in Hadoop called HDFS. So people who is not having background of Hadoop, you can just ignore this. But for people who have experience and knowledge about Hadoop, I wanted to tell you this. <clears throat> in Hadoop, we have HDFS. So HDFS is actually a file system. It's a distributed cluster level file system and where we have replication for fault tolerance, right? So similarly, Colossus is a file system a successor of GFS. So Google file system is actually uh, the reference paper used to create Hadoop distributed file system, right? So Colossus is also kind of a kind of a retrieved one from GFS. So it's a distributed cluster level file system. So BigQuery uses Colossus to store your data, to put it in very simple way. So next, what is the next thing? So next, compute. So we discussed about storage, right? So now what, what about the compute thing? So we have something for compute and we call it as Dremel. So Dremel is a compute engine used by BigQuery to compute your queries, the processing, whatever the processing you do, it actually Dremel is the application. Dremel is a framework for the computation. So Dremel is not only used in BigQuery, it's used in other framework. It's an internal project only. So they completely use this for computation. So what internally Dremel has? So Dremel has something called root server, root server, and then they have something called mixers, and then they have something called leaf nodes. So inside of Dremel, you have these architecture. So it's a kind of a high level Dremel architecture, I just wanted to tell you. So here you have some mixers, some leaf nodes, and then the root node. Okay, so now what this leaf node is. So leaf node is inside Dremel will actually helps you to read the data from the storage. That means from Colossus. 
okay and make sure or or the layer where your data aggregation will happen so you have written some big uh, uh, line large number of sql queries and you want to run some aggregation so mixers are actually uh, layer where the aggregations are taken place and then root server coordinate all these mixers and leaf nodes so this is a high level quick architecture of what dremel is now we need to ask a question ourselves like this this is a compute so this is for compute okay and this colossus is a storage so what about the connectivity of these two who connects these two so something has to be get connected right so some layer some component should be there right so which connects these two i'm sorry so which connects dremel with colossus yes we have something called jupiter so Jupiter is actually a, a network protocol, a high-speed, super-speed network protocol which connects Dremel and Colossus. So Jupiter is also a kind of an in-house project which is there uh, in Google for very long time and it is used in a different project as well. So it's like a network. It's like we they used to call it as a, a petabit Jupiter network. That is how they used to call it. So it's a network protocol which used to connect this compute and storage which is dremel and colossus so this is a very uh, a, a quick a high level architecture how bigquery internally process and store your data right so it also has replication as i told you with respect to the storage level so this is the points that you need to know and what about the whole architecture so this is the next thing i, I wanted to tell you the whole architecture has been orchestrated with a component called Borg. So Borg is actually, it's a, when I say orchestrated, it is a scheduler. So something has to be gets scheduled all these, right? So for example, when you trigger a query, so that is a job, right? So when you trigger a query, this query has to be uh, uh, communicated internally with Dremel, this Jupiter, this Colossus, your end-to-end -end query should happen, right? So this complete scheduling process happens with Borg. So this is also an in-house uh, Google's project, which is completely for a kind of an um, orchestration they use for scheduling the jobs. So this is what an overall architecture of BigQuery. Now, few more things to know to before I end, end this video, few more things to know. So first thing is, even I told this in the last video also, BigQuery stores all its data in Colossus in the format of column oriented. So column oriented, column oriented. So column oriented is a very good uh, uh, storage type because uh, it's a general, even Hive is column oriented, Redshift is column oriented, Redshift is similar to BigQuery but in AWS and BigQuery is also column oriented. And even NoSQL databases like Cassandra, HBase are all column oriented. What is an advantage of column oriented is? So for example, you have some records, for example, 1, 2, uh, A, B and then 100, 200. So you have two rows, right? So when the data gets stored this way, it's called row. So this is one row, this is one row. So it's called row oriented. So when you run some aggregation query, for example, this is a salary column, this is name column, and this is serial number column. I want to do a sum of salary means, first the query reads the whole row and then it will pick the salary. So what is the purpose of reading the whole row? It can directly read the salary column itself, right? So that is the problem in row oriented. But when you take column oriented, now let's have the same scenario. So now the data gets stored this way. So this is what column oriented. So when you trigger an aggregation query on salary column, so this is name and this is serial number. When you trigger a sum of salary, directly the query comes to this particular uh, column and then it processes the aggregation. So you are just ignoring the unnecessary reads, scans, right? So instead of reading a row. So this is what Cassandra, HBase, BigQuery, Redshift, Hive follows how the data gets stored in the storage layer. So the Colossus actually stores all your BigQuery in a column oriented format and we call that as capacitor. So Google used the terminology to define it. So we call that as a capacitor. So when it's stored as a column oriented format, we call it as capacitor in BigQuery. So it's store, the data gets stored as a capacitor in Colossus as a files, column oriented files. So this is what we need to know all about BigQuery architecture.
okay so in the next video let's start the practical so let's get how to how to access the google bigquery console and then how to trigger the query how to create database and tables and columns it's quite interesting actually so um, and how to how can we use that for free so right so I'll, I'll explain you everything in my next video please stay touch with my playlist and please do subscribe my channel if you really like this video and i do have an another channel called only digital kai it's completely for digital marketing so if you are interested please do follow my new channel as well the link is in the description box of this video so i provide lot of tech videos not only bigquery cloud we have big data python java so just go to my channel and have a look on all these courses so big data courses playlist link i have shared it in the description box of this video thanks for watching